Welcome to Synagogues of Colorado, Part 3. In this episode, we take a look at the remaining Jewish houses of worship on our list. Our first stop is in Durango, a sleepy town of about 17,500 in the southwest portion of the state near the border with New Mexico. Despite what this picturesque scene tantalizes us with, This is not the Rocky Mountains in the background. The town itself has an elevation of about 6,500 feet. Oh, and the building we're looking at is called Har Shalom, or Mountain of Peace. This is an unaffiliated congregation. It does not currently have a rabbi, but rather a ritual director who tries to lead services every Saturday morning although there is not always a guarantee of a minion or quorum. In fact, they have a campaign to try to get their dedicated members to come at least the second Saturday of every month so that they can read from the Torah with a a minion. They claim to be the only congregation within a 200-mile radius and indicate that several congregants often travel over an hour to participate in services as well as synagogue-related events. Even though they are officially unaffiliated, their practices are more in keeping with the reform movement. That synagogue in Durango doesn't have the exclusive rights to the name Har Shalom. There is also one in Fort Collins. Fort Collins has over 150,000 residents. This congregation as well does not affiliate with any specific branch of Judaism, but its practices resemble the conservative movement. It has Shabbat services both Friday evenings and Saturday mornings. It currently does not have a rabbi as spiritual leader, but rather uses lay people to lead services and functions. They do, however, hire a rabbi specifically for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. This year, it is Mark Novak. Our next stop is Grand Junction and Congregation Or Shalom. Grand Junction has about 60,000 residents, and Or Shalom is a Reformed synagogue. It became an official entity in 1977, and 10 years later it acquired this building. It utilizes an occasional visiting student rabbi, otherwise lay people lead the services. Shabbat services are held every other week. There is a synagogue in Greeley, Colorado that we can't give you much information on. Their website has been hacked, but we do believe that Sarah Gilbert is their rabbi and that they do have Friday evening and Saturday morning services. So let's jump back to Greenwood Village, which is a part of the Denver urban area, and make note of Aish Denver. Aish Torah is a Jewish outreach program that tries to makarev, or bring back into the fold, both unaffiliated and non-religious Jewish people. We shift to Morrison, Colorado, and congregation B'nai Chaim. In English, that means children of life. It currently does not have a rabbi as its spiritual leader, but utilizes the services of a cantor. This reformed congregation holds services for Shabbat on the first and third Friday nights of each month. Pueblo, Colorado has a population of about 110,000 and two Jewish houses of worship. This first one is the United Hebrew Center. It was originally called B'nai Jacob Congregation and changed its name to its present one in 1950. We believe it to be affiliated with the conservative movement. The other synagogue in Pueblo is Temple Emanuel, a reformed congregation. The facility was first built in the very early 1900s and in 1964 an adjoining building was added in. Today, the building is host to a small congregation of about 30 families, and most recently, Bertie Becker is its rabbi. Westminster is a northwest suburb of Denver and home to about 110,000 people. It's also home to Congregation B'nai Torah, which shares a facility with a church. This reformed temple was conceived in the late 1980s. Anna Moskowitz is its rabbi. Shabbat services are held on Friday evenings twice a month. 
This ends our trip through the state of Colorado to observe the Jewish houses of worship. There are plenty of other states to still check out. So, bye for now and see you real soon.